It's the Center Fantasy Football League Podcast. Welcome to football. Oh, I'm a football player. Coach, I'd like to tackle him right now. Yeah. Reviewing all of the league's scores and highlights. And previewing the upcoming matchups and scenarios. Red 7! I don't know what Red 7 means. Hot route! I don't... What is hot route? Will you just go stand on the other side, please? Fuck you! Fuck you, little walk-on fuck! Do you think it's possible that your mom won't love you anymore if she sees how bad you're losing in the game? That's why your guys are out partying, mine are running routes. And now, here's your host. What a idiot! Oh, what a loser! David. Bad Hello and welcome to the Center Fantasy Football Podcast for week one of season 12. Welcome to the new season. Uh, joining us on the program are the two competitors from, from this week. The victorious Mr. Manuel Friedman, our, uh, our commissioner. Sorry he couldn't boot somebody out of the league. He was desperate to boot somebody that entire pre-draft. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, and the coach of the uh, other Hackettstown team, Mr. Uh, Gazelutsky of the Hackettstown Hagglers. The Hackettstown Losers. Good evening, everyone. Yes. Um, yes, so we now have a, a new season underway where we have one week under our belt. Yes. yes. Um, I, you know, I don't Any comments briefly before we get into the specifics of the games? I mean, you could say hello to all of your fandom on this if you you would like fandom we don't have welcome anything. everyone yes welcome everyone to a new season um it was uh i guess a little bit more fun for for me than the other hackettstown team this week but uh it's a it's a long road uh to the playoffs it's uh I, what 12 weeks so i think it's longer than so that. I uh i see that you are uh yeah. you you have gone to go visit your uh your kicker after his performance in uh san francisco there <laughs> i'm in a good mood <laughs> to uh quote the name i guess uh he definitely put me on a good mood on monday night yeah, sure. those have left me kind of moody myself <laughs> let's move <laughs> all right let's go take a look at last week's games um so let's just go to our game first, then I can phase out the rest of this podcast. That's fine. <laughs> go for it. Um there we go. Take it away, gentlemen. You remember how to do this, right? No? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, all right. I guess I guess I'm rusty too. So all right, so. The Hackettstown's finest beat the uh, the Hackettstown Hagglers by a score of 138.96 to 113.06. Um, you were well over your projection of 121.19, and uh, the Hagglers were just under their projection of 116.85. But anyway, what happened in this game? Huh? I didn't watch any of these games, by the way. Yeah, because you're busy world traveling in Australia. I was well. Actually, I was midair the entire time. What no what time do these games take place in Australia? Like one in the morning? Um, no, they take place on Monday at ten a.m. Mm. for the early games, and then no, is it was that what it was? No, it was Monday. I don't. I don't remember. Monday, no, it was Mon Monday three. Excuse me, it was Monday three a.m. 3 a.m. That's prime time football time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but but uh, the the Thursday night game was on Friday morning. That was actually a pleasant. I, I watched that with some coffee. And then <laughs> um, on on, thir on Friday, the Thursday night game I watched on Friday morning. And then I was midair. That's right. It would have been Monday at 3 a.m. and uh, like 6 a.m. That's that's just prime time football right there. Monday at 3 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Monday Night Football would have been Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. or something, but I was already back by then. Anyway. So, so our game started on uh, 
well, it really started on Friday night football in Brazil, right? I had AJ Brown and um, Josh Jacobs going, right? So two two big big time guys. All right, that was and a good uh, Friday. Yeah, uh, Jacobs didn't do much. Um, I think he was really struggling with that field. That field was horrendous. Like I was, I was actually worried that like those guys would get hurt. Um, Jordan Love did. Luckily for me, uh, it wasn't. But I knew someone was going to get hurt there, and I just wanted to get there unscathed. Like that was my my biggest uh, biggest goal. And then I know um, Gaza had a big problem with the AJ Brown eighty yard touchdown, uh, which kind of put him into a hole, but that was, that was a big part of AJ Brown's 22.9 points. That was all of it. So wasn't doing dick. pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like um, eight points into the third quarter. Pretty and much. Then yeah. Jair Alexander just, and bump and run coverage. And AJ Brown just elbowed him in the face and ran for an 80 yard touchdown. <laughs> and Josh Jacobs. So, was uh, but, Josh Jacobs wasn't doing shite. And then all of a sudden in the second half, he started gaining momentum to end up with 12.4, which is fine. You had a 35 point lead going into the, the thing. It was fine. Things really were cooking with oh. Hill that 80 yard touchdown. It was really ball. only three. It was only three points above the projection, though. Like yeah, if was, you count both players going into the start. And then, of course, things just went downhill with the Dallas defense in the afternoon. And then A chain got in there every time Moster was supposed to get in there. It was A chain, <laughs> and then and then it was like Moody blew up. Like that was just a final kick in the nuts. Yeah, I only needed one point going into uh, Monday night. Plus, um, plus, I thought you actually had a chance, given that Laporta was doing absolutely nothing, like midway into the th- no, no, no third A-point, quarter, not absolutely nothing. Ingram's 1.5 is absolutely nothing. <laughs> if you want the actual definition of absolutely nothing, <laughs> which is what we were about to become. <laughs> I had the Chicago defense, and of course I dropped him, and Dr. Hockey got 24 points out of him because I had to read the latte pick that New Orleans was going to stomp all over Carolina, which they did 47 to 10, but it didn't show up in the defensive standings. All right, and you just played it perfectly. Yeah. What can I say? Prescott was neutralized by Turd Ferguson. All right. Stefan Diggs scored two big touchdowns. That was great at 21 points, but that was CJ Stroud conspiracy and perjury throwing it to him. So you got all the points out of that. I mean, Brown and his bullshit touchdown. Marvin Harrison Jr. didn't do dick, but it didn't matter. <clears throat> Mostert sucked. He was a non factor. Ingram sucked. He was a non factor. Devontae Adams has mint. Hey, AJ is definitely the main guy in Miami. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, and 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 Devontae Adams got murdered because of his horrible quarterback, Mitchell Batch. My cat could have got it to him. He was wide open multiple times. It was a joke. It was, the, the, the whole thing was a disaster. I got to rethink the Devontae Adams things. Maybe I'll start offering up some deals. When when the Haggles start offering up deals, the league benefits <laughs> because you, you, your deals are always ridiculous. Um, At least uh, Tyreek Hill got 26 points after the arrest, so that's good. Um, yeah. yeah, no, most what, what are... that, lightning rods last year. It was like Keenan Allen and Humphreys or Herbert or whatever the fuck his name is for like nothing for like a kicker. <laughs> Ridiculous. Anybody want a Devonte Adams, Stefan Diggs combo meal? Yeah. As you say, people are already, uh, sending you, uh, <laughs> sending so you, explain the sending you their worst. dollar mail that Tyreek Hill, uh, paid sending your, your or absolute you worst. Um, how do you feel about uh, Ferguson? Because you were so happy that you picked him up, <laughs> and he gets injured. Uh, yeah, uh, not really. I guess I guess that's karma, karma. for like jumping up and down to get him mm-hmm. from the garbage. <laughs> uh, you know, so he played like trash himself. He should have stayed there. He should have stayed in the garbage bin. But uh, you know, I was a little bit. I mean, surprised about Marvin Harrison Jr. because he was hyped up in the Latte Show. With Matthew Barry, he didn't do shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was wide open. Just Kyler Murray just couldn't see over the defense and then uh, get him the ball, which was a shame. But I'm I'm gonna use a little bit of patience with him. Like, I think he's gonna have a a really good game at some point. Um, so I'm not like losing hope on him. 
But 1.4 is, is atrocious. Like that, you know, a couple more weeks like that and uh, you're going to be in the garbage bin. So All let's right. see. Well, no, sorry. Go ahead. Any no, bench blunders in this? Uh, in this? Uh, no, I mean, Shahid. Really? Not 16, but I mean. Bench blunders. My entire bench didn't do shit. I know. That's, a, that's impressive how bad your bench was. That, this bench is putrid. <laughs> <laughs> What happened to DeAndre Hopkins? 1.8? <laughs> well, Tennessee receivers, come on. They've they've always been terrible. Uh Cole Komet, so excited about the, I mean, I Bryce Young it. is atrocious. Can somebody explain? I so I I I've seen this guy's name, the A Lasivas, whatever. Why is his why is the his last name lowercase? Is there what what what, what is this? That's a capital I. Oh, it's an I. Iosif is. Yeah, I'm yeah. so out of it. Okay, if that makes my, more sense if it's an Iosif. He, if you look at my current roster, he's in the dumpster. So anybody can have him because he sucks. <laughs> I don't care how you spell your name. Where's There's no I in there, sir. Oh, God. Is it Iosifus. I have nothing else to say about this. Neither yeah. do I. This is a debacle. <laughs> Great. Let's go to the next game. What, what what should that be? What's the most exciting? Who are we? Who are we keeping on the line? Who who who? Well, I we mean, and the, fan, the fans' big beatdown. He has to go last. That's true. Um, we can just get my game over with. So, I would have beat you. You only got one nine. I didn't really do well. I mean, but although I have to say, I didn't do well at the at the lower position. So I and I actually made, I guess, what would be considered a bench blunder. But all right. So the 1603ers uh defeat clever name pending 109.18 to 87.82. Uh both of us were well below our projections. Um so I mean he had hurts going in that Friday slash Saturday for me game in Brazil. Got 20.42 points out of it. That's actually not that great for him. He could do better, but I mean, whatever. Um, and then just, I mean, he got pedestrian performances out of Derrick Henry and Josh Taylor. Tank Dell got 8.9. Fryer was 6.7. Um, McConkie was actually, I mean, I actually fought with him kind of uh, in, um, he, he like outbid me by a dollar for this guy. And he, he he's, you know, he, he's looking good. 14.9. Tucker got 6.7 and only four from the defense. I mean, so for me, I actually was pretty happy with Rice after he got the, you know, but it was a Thursday night game, so who knows? Godwin did great with 22 points. Um, and Bijan and uh, Brees Hall did what they needed to do. That They got it about their projections, so everything was fine. It, it's just, I made the mistake on Hubbard, who only got 1.4. I thought he, he, I mean, he was supposed to be the lead back in that game against New Orleans. I mean, we both got shafted by new orleans latte projections and whatever else i don't know what happened there and um you know i could i mean i was baiting between him and um shakir um so i could have gotten about 10 more points if i would have just done that and then my score would have looked more it would have looked actually with what i would have expected mcbride was disappointing but hopefully that gets i mean none of the tight ends did anything this weekend and the seattle de defense was fine nine points you know it's fine um and, yeah and my bench blunder is 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 essentially just playing Hubbard. i mean nobody was really outstanding but that was it he didn't really have anybody on his bench i i personally wouldn't start anyone on that carolina offense like they're so atrocious I mean, and Bryce I, Young is absolutely like putrid. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I steer away from the the Carolina Panthers. I think they're already tanking for a draft pick. Oh yeah, no, I look. Oh, I, already, trust me, I, I I have I have <laughs> I have Hubbard is now in the in the cupboard. He is he's been thrown in the trash. He's gone. So we don't have to worry about that. I'm yeah. sure somebody could pick him up. Whalers, I noticed, had the backup to to him. Anyway, I mean, he was going to play. I think I, I think there was like two weeks for this, and then the the backup's supposed to come in and probably take over his role. But it's it, it's a shitty role anyway, which is why I threw him in the trash. He's not worth anything. So goodbye. Um, I mean, I if, do, I, I, if I were you, I would really be 
imp or uh, excited about Brees Hall. Like having 18.3 points with the Jets kind of playing pretty poorly overall. Like I think that that's a great number that you can actually be happy about. Yeah, I'm happy with my 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 running back core. I'm actually, I mean, so look, um, you know, my my team was built around the, the two running backs. I'm actually more pleasantly surprised by the wide receivers. They, they I mean, they did really well. Um, the disappointment for me was golf. Uh, I mm -hmm. I didn't watch that game, so I don't know why it was so terrible. <laughs> but I mean, and and by the way, I got the notification about the touchdown like late. Uh, like it, it, that, that touchdown didn't even happen until much later. So as I was going through customs, um, so that was a pretty crappy game for him, um, which is why I have yeah. rectified that situation. Possibly though, we're going to, he's, 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 uh, he's fighting for his job this week. Let's just say, um, but other than that, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I look, we got the win. It's all I needed. Yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say about that. Yeah. Great. Now let's move on to the next game. Which should be... What should it be? Oh, uh, Let's do Gronky Kong and Nick and Jamie. All right. That's actually a close game. Um, yeah. So uh, Nick and Jamie actually pull this one out. 124.16 to 117.64. Um, not only uh, exceeding their their projection, but uh, exceeding both of their projections. Um, whereas Gronky Kong fell slightly below it. Um, I, well, all right. So looking at this Saquon, ah, I remember. Yes, I do remember a Saquon. Um, Bow tie was complaining about that. Cause he said he wanted him and he was in bad reception area and lost during the bidding or whatever. I don't know. Um, but he did want him. I actually thought he was. I I think that's a great pickup. I don't remember how much he went for, but I, you know, this certainly was a possibility to happen, and it did. Um, other than that, I mean, look, Keenan Allen, I think, is a disappointment. But I, you look at that team, and it's. I, I think it was a smart pickup to have him. Kelsey with a disappointing six point four, but that, like I said, all tight ends were terrible this week. Um, but Kyle Pitts ironically did all right with 11.6 um yeah i mean gibbs got 17.4 18.7 from samuel only 12.36 from herbert but then again mahomes didn't do too well with only 17.4 32 for cop i've cop clearly yeah. had a come on what's that he's disgusting he's back to his previous form before the injury yeah correct and and didn't puka they like, get injured or something else he which, did. Which yeah. is gonna make, Hooper, which is gonna make him even going to go up. Yeah. yeah I mean, up for forty one dollars. That's a steal. Did he get him for forty one dollars? Wow. That's that's a threat. Yeah. No. That's uh. That's a fantastic pickup right there. Um. McLaurin on three point seven. I mean, the the poor guy. I mean, he's on just a. Te he's got a terrible quarterback there. I mean, and and in the past he's had terrible quarterbacks. Yeah, he's the he's the poor man's Devontae. Abbey. horrid quarterback. Such potential. It, it sucks. Yeah. I'm throwing to my guys from now on. <laughs> but he's very weak at tight end. Um, I think Mark Andrews is going to get phased out by uh, Isaiah Likely. Um, uh, um, that I mean, after this week's performance, that's what people seem to think. Well, I mean, let's wait to see what um, happens going forward. But yeah, that is certainly possible. Um. Does he have? I mean, he has Taysom Hill <laughs> to back him up. Yeah, he's he in and has... out of the dumpster. Hmm? He's in and out of the dumpster. I think he dropped him already. Yeah, well, all right, then then he doesn't. But he has Higby on IR or whatever. I don't know. Well, he'll, he'll figure it out. I mean, tight ends were terrible this week. So frankly, Mark Andrews' performance yeah. wasn't even that below, much below. I mean, look. I mean, Kelsey got six point four. Um, he was too busy with that ridiculous thing at the uh, U.S. Open where he was. Dancing, I mean, I saw, Taylor. I saw, I saw something that said, "Is he just doing an SNL impression of himself?" Like this is what it would look like if he was doing an SNL impression of the character of himself. It was just so ridiculous. Um, it was. So, so, 
I'm uh, glad that tournament is over. I can't. I couldn't stand all the celebrities and stuff at the at the U.S. Open. Like, I, I the U.S. Open has gotten so corporatized and just like a pish posh of just celebrities just drooling all over each other. Like, I just can't stand it. I mean, that's all it is. I mean, that's everything. I know. <laughs> um. So yeah, I mean, look, he's got a solid base of a team. Uh, I mean, the problem is Kansas City seems to have underperformed with the two the two U.S. Open attendees at uh, Mahomes and uh, <laughs> and Kelsey. Um, yeah. I mean, Cup is fantastic. He's just going to have to have... Um... Well, I mean, he's got uh, Williams. That's kind of a bench blunder there with uh, 24.40. Oh, but what happened? He's got uh, an ankle. Mm-hmm. It's limited. So we'll see about that. Um Otherwise, I mean, yeah, you're right. He's got some weaknesses at tight end, but otherwise seems to be okay. And frankly, Nick and Jamie's team. Um, I mean, these are these are two similar, you know, solid teams. Jordan Reed, wow, with 33.10 points. What happened there? Oh, because he's in Green Bay and yeah. Although yeah, we'll see what happens with Green it. Bay now that they have uh who's who's even their quarterback now? Is it that high schooler that came in at the end of the game there? <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. why don't you uh, how about what Freeman? What do you think about Tyreek Hill going to Nick and Jamie for Jameer Gibbs, George Pickens, and Brian Thomas Jr.? He's already trying to make terrible trades. You think that's fair? <laughs> Could we get through the analysis of this game before you start making terrible trade offers? Look, the Hagglers are priced to move. Get in now while you can. You're trying to trade away your one good player again? You are you are insane. You're the bottom floor. Look. You're an insane madman. You lost one game. Jameer Gibbs. Oh, tell me the trade again. So Tyree Kill for Jameer Gibbs, George Pickens, and Brian Thomas Jr. A three for one. And Thomas Jr. That, you, uh, why would you do that? I like the guy. I saw what he did in Jacksonville. He's getting a lot of targets. When you say you like the guy, do you mean Nick of Nick and Jamie? You like that guy? You want to give him? You want to give him Saquon Barkley, and then you want him to add uh, Tyreek Hill to his lineup? I, you want him to be the first three-time I, champion before anybody else gets anything else? I, I think that's good for him because it's just like you're taking up so much roster space. I'm not as a big fan of Jameer Gibbs just because, like, you know, we saw on that overtime drive, like Montgomery got the ball the entire time. Yeah, but uh, even with that, he still racked up 17. That was nice. The, need, the lead needs to be re- – you, you, you're almost like you, – you, <laughs> you're like a Jamel. Like, yeah. Like, like the ridiculous trades. I don't know. I accept I think... your loss. Move on. Stop listening to Matthew Barry for 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 Christ's sake. Stop making your decisions What's... based on the latte picks, and don't throw away your team after one loss. Jesus. What's the legal news with uh with Hill? Like, is he going to get in trouble for that, or is 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 that like seen over? No, there's no legal ramifications. He's that's it. He was left that's it. Fine. The team was actually outraged how he was thrown out of the car and slammed to the concrete. Yeah, I don't but think I think he's amazing. prone for for these kind of episodes again. You know, like you have to read the room in that situation. You know, like I know the cop was probably wrong too. I'm not like absolving him, but I'm just saying like when you do this kind of stuff, that draws red flags because like they could do this again. He thinks pull he's him above over the on the, at the game. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? The the cops are just gonna be spending up sending out a speed trap for a Tyree a hill trap every game? Like they're just gonna be sitting out the stadium? Come on. No, <laughs> this is not something that's, that he's set up for. It's ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I think you're just saying that because you want to steal Hill from Geese and you're kind of like, hey, <laughs> I, I, he, he, he's set up for this kind of thing. He's I, I would look out for that. Look, I would dump him off. Let me give you my garbage for him right now. That's what he's trying to do right there. <laughs> You are a fool if you give away Tyreek Hill. I, I've said this many times in this league about, I, look, as somebody who had uh, Christian McCaffrey for many years, and we can get into the discussion about that later, but as somebody who had him many times and paid absurd amounts of money for him, not 
Tyreek Hill numbers. <laughs> but if you want Tyreek Hill, if you want the players that go for hundreds of dollars or eighty dollars, you have to pay for them in the draft. It is, it is, it is a shunda if you give it away. In a trade, like if you just give it, like you just gave away auction money to be like, it's just insane to me that anybody would give away those people. You would have to pry them from my cold, dead hands in order to get those players away. Not McCaffrey specifically. Dave, year, thinks, he, Dave thinks you should be a, a detained for that uh, for that trade offer. I do. I think you should be thrown on the ground. <laughs> and, <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous that you would even consider uh, getting rid of him. I, I, you're one of your, your one. Why are we? Why are you even on your game? But uh, you're one player that did well. Why would you want to throw him away? I don't understand. I don't understand it. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand how you you you, you won a championship with Flacco. I mean, it's it's unbelievable. It, 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 it defies logic. <laughs> this is why Nick went insane. Nick Zaveri went insane when Manny won the championship. Or no. When he won the championship and both of you were eliminated, but you both made an insane trade and he was still pissed about that when he's winning his own championship because of how insane you are. Let's move on. Anything else about this game? Yeah, I, just... I think okay. if you're going to offer him Hill, like you're going to need like Barkley and Debo, you know, or Gibbs and Debo, like $98 is no joke. Like you need, you need two really good guys. Like, who's equitable to Tyreek Hill one on one? It's probably like McCaffrey. He was the number one or the number two, I believe, receiver in the entire league last season in terms of fantasy points. I think CD yeah. Lamb was number one. He was number two. And you want to just give him away for for Jameer Gibbs and whatever, like, and and, and a try a pile of trash player. Like, I don't. That you and you paid a hundred dollars for him. Why did you pay a hundred dollars for him? What is wrong with you? And why are we still talking about this? Do you have anything else on this game? All right, move on to the next game. Just throwing it out there. Let's go to the next matchup, and I'll I'll tell you what I want for Hill in the next matchup. <laughs> Great. What 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 what's the next offer? Let's let's go to primetime. Your favorite player versus Zamunda. Uh, well, we'll Zamunda with a. Putrid performance. Yeah, I mean, this was. Ouch. I don't even know what happened here. This is terrible. So, the uh, prime time ends up winning one eighteen point eight two. By the way, why is why is Oddwin prime time? I mean, if anybody's gonna be prime time in this in this league, it's Eugene who only plays his regular league games at prime time. Well, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Fine. Mm -hmm. Oddwin's team. What happened? Wasn't he? I know he. I know he changed it to prime time last year and why is it sf south florida right right this is just a dumb name he had a good identity he was wakanda why would he whatever all right so he's 118.82 um <laughs> to 76.78 wow this is terrible um so tua gets 20 points it's you know good performance there i mean with a high powered miami offense i mean you know throwing to to um really good players like tyreek hill um, why don't you give it to him so you can have two furs with 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 Tua and and you know why don't you take um uh Mumra he he's 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 a buy low <laughs> player right there for four point three points that's a name ridiculous four point three and then uh Jamar Chase I hear he has contract problems why don't you trade him away too he's pissed off about his contract twelve point two points uh Cook thirteen point three. Najee Harris with only 8.9, 8 from Kittle, 10 from Watson, uh, Fairbairn, 17, 20. I mean, you already gifted him the Chicago defense, by the way, which is why he has a good score right here. 24 <laughs> points. You take away 24 points from his defense. Uh, <laughs> this is not looking like he's he's, he's right at, at, at the Zamunda level right there. And <laughs> you are actually winning your game. But, but you want to throw away your entire team. How about you don't throw away people like the Chicago defense? <laughs> that, that would make a difference <clears throat> and someone to just like i mean what's going on here so kyler murray 16 i mean it's definitely not prime time when your kicker and your defense outscores everyone else yeah exactly fairband with 17.2 like, and, and chicago with 20 we don't want to see that shit in prime time yeah exactly 
So Zamunda, yeah. 16.8 for, for Kyler Murray. It's decent performance there. CD Lamb with only 13.6. Maybe he should dump him off like like he's yesterday's news, like Hill, apparently, who had 26 points. I, I, I can't even believe you would entertain throwing away the... I, I'm not going to talk about it. 8.2 from... Well, from, I mean, Zamunda's got... You know, you could... you could. Who are you going to... Um... One, well, him well, one, of, one of the two, what is what isn't Z Mart trade with, with, with G Mart? And, and and you could all I mean, is, are you looking to be the news of Why don't you pick up Nakua? Puka, I, I hear he's a great player. <laughs> Why don't you trade Hill for Puka in a whalers like deal? <laughs> I mean, let's see. Sean McGay said Wednesday that Nakua knee has unique injury. It's unique. It's a unique injury. That's that's the kind you want. <laughs> yeah um <laughs> great so then you have kyron williams with 14.4 by the way this is not good for the league the fact that zamunda has the lowest score i mean that that, that means there's gonna be some bargain basement prices over at Zamunda. i mean the stores are open the, the the emails are gonna be flooded with with horrid trade offers uh over the next few days um <laughs> between gmart and zmart they're like competing they're they're, they're competing <laughs> they're, ship they're, they're over some raiders i know Samir uh, White could ship over some Raiders. Oh God. Schultz, 4.6. <laughs> Dobbs, 9. 1 from Zerline and 6 from the Miami Defense. Um, to plenty of bench blunders, by the way. 22.9 from Dobbins, 13.7 uh, from Lockett and, uh, well, I mean, Lawrence, whatever. That that was not good. But um, his, his bench... Almost outscored his uh his regular team sixty six point nine eight from the bench seventy six point seven eight from the regular team. Wow, yeah, I, I'm expecting some deals, mm. which will be uh, handed out. Mm-hmm. So Z Mart is open. I'm sure it is. If C D <laughs> Lamb remains on his team, I would be shocked. Because here's the interesting thing. Because look to, to all of the 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 scoundrels <laughs> in the league. Uh, here's my advice to you, C D Lamb. Um, held out with his contract and had all of these, uh, you know, he, he was not prepared for the regular season. This is the buy low. At, at, this is, this is the, uh, the blue light special over, <laughs> over at Z Mart right now for, for 13.6 <laughs> points. Cause he's going to be the same person he was last year. Once he gets acclimated to playing again. So right now the 13.6 looks terrible. But that's going to be your blue light special for this week. That's what you want to go for if you're going to go shopping at Z-Mart. All right. Um, <laughs> anything else here? <laughs> nope. Um, so that leaves us with two games. So um, I've been fascinated by the machinations <laughs> of, of, of the champ. The champ is here uh, with only 95.58 points. Mm-hmm. Tillett with the highest score in the league. This, was, I believe, was the blowout of the week. Um <clears throat> Tillett getting 143.38 uh, to Whalers 95.58. Um, so Richardson ends up getting 30.08. And then um, Jordan Mason, smart that he went and picked up the uh, backup there, gets 22.2. Uh, Connor gets 19.3. And then everybody else fell off a cliff. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. I mean, obviously he had the problem of McCaffrey. Um but I mean that wasn't even a problem because he had Mason, so he's fine there. So I still think he has to address the fact that the rest of his team sucks. Um anybody on the bench? Zay Flowers with eleven and Ford with uh eighteen point nine. Ford is actually uh good. I mean, he is st- I will say he's stocked up at running backs, which is kind of curious why he would put um wide receiver in the flex. I think Cleveland, especially another... against the Dallas defense, like, I, know. I don't think that was a good. I don't think it was a good move but... either. I would have just, I would have. I mean, retrospect is whatever, but I certainly would have. Um, I mean, I look, I might have put in Jalen Warren. I'm not going to lie, you know, in retrospect, but I think Ford is actually probably the guy there. What? I probably would have put in Flowers, but yeah, sure. Um, although it's a Thursday night game, so you know you want to move yeah, stuff true. around. I mean, Alave and and Pittman, they're they're not bad on paper. Um, and Pittman, by the way, um, you know he should in theory be getting two furs because Richardson's throwing th- to him. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I would avoid uh, Cleveland Browns for the near, for, you know, right now, given their horrid 
quarterback in everything situation. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, look, he's he's solid at running back. And uh, the quarterback play was great. So he just has to work on the rest of it. Um, I have to say, I mean, back to, uh, you know, also Godwin on your team, like these Tampa Bay receivers, Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, like they continue to consistently be pretty good. They're a great team. And that's actually why I picked up Baker and we could talk about that. But yeah, uh, the, the, they have been a very I mean, I had I had both Evans and Godwin last year and I was playing both of them in, in you know, in, in games and, right. and was getting, you know, the kind of production that I would want from any kinds uh, right. of receivers so yeah i mean till it outbid me for him this year because uh, i was actually thinking about doing the same thing again because i like them both and i think that look yeah I, I mean look obviously after one week you're gonna say you know and he has the highest score Lee, you're gonna say you're naturally gonna say he's the best team but i really do think that he has a really good uh, team. I mean, you look at Tillett's team. I don't know how he got this whole team. <laughs> I mean, we were all asleep at the wheel, but I think that he certainly has a fantastic team. I mean, so Josh Allen is quarterback, who obviously goes out and gets. Yeah, I think that's a top top quarterback. I've been targeting him. I I've I want him badly. Um, I'm PJs. willing to trade some of my top dogs for him. I think he's just going to have a phenomenal year. And I think he's going to be actually helped by the fact that he doesn't have digs on his team anymore. And he's, yeah. he can kind of just run and do what he pleases, I feel. And I think that that's going to give him some freedom. Also, he's flying under the radar this year. Like, whereas last year, I feel, felt like, oh, uh, you know, Super Bowl or bust. Now, no one's not really not talking about him or the, the Bills as a big threat anymore. So I actually think that that's going to help him. So. I've been listening to some podcasts where they're they're like just bet uh, Josh Allen for MVP because his numbers are just like gonna be just incredible. Yeah. Um, I don't doubt no. any of that. I think that all of that is probably true. And and he no longer has the Madden curse. Who does have the Madden curse? By the yeah. way, <laughs> you see, he's on the other team, CMC. But yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, uh, Nico. And Nico Collins, like, you know, it's going to be I think it's going to be similar with Houston with the with the uh, Evans and Godwin thing like with yeah, I mean, Collins you... and uh, Diggs. I mean, they're both fantastic receivers like you can play both of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, so he's got the best quarterback in you know, in fantasy and in our league, he's got two top flight wide receivers. Mixon is looking to be. Really, I mean, he's the only running back there in in Houston now. He was, you know, like I think he's finally. Look, I, Mixon was a joke for for many years. I think in Cincinnati, like because he was good, but he was never like he would never really perform that well. But I think in this situation, I think it's perfect for him, especially with all of those receivers. It opens up thing, you know, it opens up opportunities for the running back. I think he's really good there. Um, Rashad White, um, uh, he was really good last year. We'll see how things, uh, so I have, uh, the backup there, Bucky, whatever his name is. He doesn't even have a picture, but I, 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 I sip some lattes and there was some rumblings about whether or not, you know, the, the, the target split there. Um, so we'll see, but, but, you know, how he progresses as the season goes along. But I mean, obviously still he was the number one guy and he still got pretty good numbers there. Dalton Kincaid. Um, he's got Josh Allen throwing to him. As I said, nobody, none of the tight ends did anything well this week, but I mean, I still think that that's a great pickup, even if he had a poor week this week. Um, and DJ Moore, I mean, that's a solid, you know, receiver there. And then like, you look at his bench, he still has Pollard and Taji Spears. Um, so he's got both running backs in Tennessee. Um, and then, yeah, obviously everybody in Cleveland is a disappointment, but but other than that, uh, he's got an extremely solid team this year. Um, um, you know, he's I mean, it's very early, but I, I would I would venture to say he's probably the, the, the early favorite. And just looking at the composition of the team, he's got he's got he's got a lot of good things. Um, I like Mixon, but I, I think I worry about that team becoming like super pass heavy. I don't, you know, <laughs> I 
I mean, I think there will be. And I, I also think Rashad White, like, I was actually very close to offering him a trade for Allen and Rashad White and uh, for CJ Stroud and AJ Brown. I mean, he would never take. First of all, Kimmel's not going to take that. Kimmel <laughs> is very reticent about trading in general. Mm -hmm. Um, mostly because he thinks that people are ripping him off and and most of the time he's correct <laughs> so you gotta offer him something well, don't, don't encourage that i think that's a pretty even trade because you're getting stroud who's a top tier quarterback probably not to the level of josh allen but you know a tier under and then aj brown who's better than rashad white but he's already he's already wide receiver heavy look if we, i i, I uh, let me just talk about let me just talk about trades for a second, since since you, you all of you are just just foaming at the mouth to start trading. Everybody <laughs> always seems when they look at the trade and when they offer the trades are always looking at what their needs are. Like, I mean, everybody self masturbates on their trades constantly and they never look to see what the person that they're trading with is is would be possibly looking for. So if you want to look at Tillett's team. I know that you want Josh Allen. Great. He's not he's not wanting to give him up. He's not going to be wanting. You got to look at where he's weakest and then offer him something there. Probably, probably, probably tight end. Maybe after this week, but I I I mean I don't think that he I I think it is that it, I mean look. Certainly if you're looking at it right right now, that would be the weakest place. But th that could bounce back in a week and and I I would presume that he would probably want to sit on it. So maybe the flex. I mean, obviously, you're not going to offer him a defense and kicker, which is clearly the weakest this week. But, you know, uh, you got to look at the, the areas uh, where people would be the weakest. I think it's tough to make that determination after week one also, by the way. But you got to look at their needs. They're not. Yeah. He's not look, he's not. Look, I know that there are a couple stores in this league. They're there's <laughs> there's Z Mart and, and G Mart. They're just looking at, you know, they're, they're looking to move product. They're, you know, they get it in. They're looking to move product. I get it. <laughs> Most players are actually consumers and want to keep a team that's going to win. I mean, I'm I'm both. I mean, I, I, I don't mind trading. But, you know, I'm not going to. I guess I'm victim of just looking at my interests. I never look at anyone else's. So like that, that's good advice. Yeah. You're looking in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can't trade with the mirror. Like who, who would I want? I look, I would like Josh Allen. on my team. I would like Josh Allen too. Great. <laughs> I don't really want to give you anything for him, but I would love Josh Allen on my team. <laughs> anyway. I, mean, I have a good quarterback. So I'm just looking to upgrade. So I understand that you are looking to upgrade and Josh Allen would be an upgrade. What are you going to upgrade on his team? His wide receiver. Then he would have AJ Brown and he would get, he would uh, upgrade on the flex position. Sure. AJ Brown is the top, what five receiver. I agree. He's at the top. I, I, you know, is it worth it? I mean, look, maybe. But you're and you're having him give up White. What are you giving him back in the in the running back position? Nothing. So he's just gonna not have running backs. That might be a problem for a team. Teams tend to like running backs. Although I guess he has both. Yeah, that, he has he has both the the Tennessee yeah, people. Maybe he can play Pollard. Them. Whatever. I'm not gonna. I, I'm not gonna be your agent. Just go ahead. Make your right. make your I, offer and have. I decided it. not. I mean, I, like I don't. I first of all, I didn't think he would um, accept that, and I, I just you know. Those guys had pretty good weeks. So I'll I'll ride it out with them a little bit, but I was close to hitting send. I mean, yeah. So anyway, anything else on this game? No. All right. Uh, now let's see who you guys want to snarf up from this game. Uh, Dave's secret crush ends up beating the lightning rods. One thirty one point eight two. To ninety two point oh six. Um, well, uh, are we gonna have a, a year where uh, the, the fan is gonna be good this year? Oh, uh, uh, can we take that? Can we take the mouth again? Oh man, 
So Lamar gets 27.12 points in that Thursday night game. Um, 16.2 for Waddle. Etienne with 11.9. 22 for Kamara. I want Kamara, actually. Um, although I hate saying that because now I'm going to see some ridiculous low ball offer from him. Um, 11.8 from Bowers. 11.6 from Neighbors. And then once again, the kicker's going off with 22.30 points. Um, and then three from the Houston defense for the lightning rods. Um, so Burrow was disappointed. Did he did he injure himself? I think I saw a video, something about that. Anybody? Mm, I think they were talking about his wrist or something, but he said his wrist didn't impact his throwing. Okay. Um, Justin Jefferson with 15.9 points. Then you have Drake London, who was a disappointment that entire um Atlanta team is gonna be disappointed, except for Bijan. Uh, 3.5 only there. Eckler gets 10.2, which... So I was actually very curious about how Eckler would perform this season because he was, I think, one of the biggest question marks that we could possibly have since... Um, new system... I was shocked that he went for 21 bucks in the Brown? draft. He went for like 23 bucks or something. I mean, but the the unknown is sitting there, so I don't know. So I, th you know, I mean, we, we didn't know what kind of Eckler we need. I mean, look, and ten point two is a decent score. I think we need to see where it goes from here. But good okay. to see that he's getting into double digits. Aaron Jones, I think that was a fantastic pickup. I think he's going to do well there in Minnesota. It gets eighteen point nine. Conklin disappointing, even though Money Man in uh, Madden only gets uh, one point six. One um and then garrett wilson uh you know so he's i mean he's a jets fan he's jets heavy down there at the bottom just like the jets are uh 12 points from garrett wilson uh, who actually probably will do better next week i think that the jets you know they played san francisco the first week clearly san francisco is a little bit better mm -hmm. so we'll see elliot with a 9.9 .9 and 12 from the Pittsburgh defense, if we go down, are there any bench blunders sitting here? Isaiah Likely. Oh, that's a tough one right there. Um, yeah. But, I mean, he can obviously put him in for Conklin. <laughs> I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, Brian Robinson, he has both Washington RBs, 17.9. Uh, um, and then a fun Charbonnet for 12.10. David Montgomery, once again, on Eugene's team with 16 points. I mean, the man, mm -hmm. I mean, he's obviously going to be moved. I'm also surprised that Ramondre sat on the bench because Ramondre is actually a really good player. But, I mean, I guess Eugene is really strong at running back. I mean, he, you know, I mean. I mean, he doesn't have any, like, top, top, top uh, running backs, but he has, like, a bunch of good ones. Yeah, he's got. You I know, mean, and I think I'm yeah. make him tough to play. I mean, I wouldn't start neighbors. I wouldn't start anyone on that Giants offensive front, neighbors. honestly. I... He loves them. Hmm? He, I mean, he's a Giants fan. He loves neighbors. I mean, they're, they're touting that. But yeah, no, I agree. I wouldn't touch them. Yeah. What was with those uh, Montreal Canadian uniforms that they were wearing? I don't understand that. <laughs> it was one of the ugliest uniforms I think I've ever seen. Yeah. It was, it was... Absolutely hideous. Yeah. I, like the performance of the Giants I, I don't know what was worse, the Giants performance or the the uh, the, the uh, uniforms. Exactly. Horrible. Does anybody think that Daniel Jones will see the fantasy field in this league this year at all or any fantasy? Field? <laughs> I'll give you Tyree kill for him. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you win a game. Yeah, and I was Drake London was was hideous. The the guy I picked up, Ray Ray McLeod, um, actually out um outgained him. Which I mean, was Jerk Cousins is. I I don't understand why everybody always loves Jerk Cousins. I I don't understand. Like he's good, actually. So here's the interesting thing, and and I I kind of mentioned this in a message prior to the the auction was that I that I was flirting with the idea of of Kyle Pitts. I actually think Kyle Pitts is is, is one of the people that's going to benefit because Jerk Cousins actually does like throwing it to the tight end. Just like um Hawkinson had a good season in Minnesota. But I don't understand why they keep paying him all this money. I, I think that it doesn't help his receivers. I mean, look, Jefferson did well, but that's because of Jefferson more than anything else and we can see that he's still getting 15.9 with Sam Darnold. Um, but uh, I mean, yeah, I, I just mm -hmm. 
Atlanta, as far as their wide receivers, I, it's trash. It's gonna go. It's yeah. actually, I, it's gonna go through Pitts. I think. I think Eugene finally learned what I learned about DK Metcalf last year. He sucks. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, he's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, he he's 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 back and forth often. Although they have, you know, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. All I can say about this game is that when you make a bench blunder like the lightning rods did, you are likely to lose. Sure. I mean, look, had he put in um, likely. Um, and and the Dallas kicker doesn't go off like like he does. I mean, this this would have been a very different game. I do think that we will see Eugene start uh, making some trade moves because he has too many you can't play with all these running backs. Um, yeah. And he's lacking in wide receivers to a degree. I mean, it's his weak. I mean, look, he could play at neighbors and, and Waddle. I think Waddle is solid. Um, so he could play those two and then, you know, have a flex at a, at a running back. But Eugene is somebody who likes to trade, obviously. Um, so I think, you know, maybe. Yeah, but he's another guy that only looks at his own interests, right? Or like his. I mean, he only he, looks in the mirror in everything. Yeah. There, he, he, there is no world <laughs> that exists outside of Eugene. In fact, he, he hasn't listened to any of this podcast until his name was mentioned. So, agreed. He definitely only looks at his own interests. In which case, yes, he will be sh- shuffling off. So the trading is not. I mean, he likes to trade, but it's not easy to find something equitable. Correct, but expect some offers for Zamir White, for the likes of Josh Allen and 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 some other superstars. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, that uh, it looks like it does it for uh, last week's games. Um. Yeah. So let's take let's any, any transactions. Well, we're gonna take a break so that um, okay. so that all of our viewers can go pee, and uh, and our host as well, and uh, then we will come back on the other side of it and uh, look at the transactions and look at uh, next week's games. So, all right, on. sounds good. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to the show. Uh, let's yeah, let's talk about some transactions before the new transactions that are going to go after this podcast take place. Um, so there were there wasn't that much happening on the waiver wire. So we had like the I guess the big pickup would have been Tank Bigsby for nineteen dollars to you. Mm-hmm. Um, then ten dollars for Demarcus Robinson to uh, Zamunda. Lazard for six um, to you as well. And then two for Parkinson to the Whalers and two for the Rams defense to Zamunda. And then that was it for the, the, the free agent bids. Actually, let's take a look. There were only two of the free agent bids that even had other offers. So you had Tank Bigsby, you spent 19. Eugene was the next in line paying zero. <laughs> and, um, and Parkinson had a two dollar bid and outbid Gronky Kong, who also bid zero. <laughs> I don't even know who these. I, who's Who's Colby Cheese Parkinson? I don't. Colby Jack guy? Cheese is on the Rams. He's their starting tight end until um, Higby gets back. Ah, uh, was that what happened? What did he get? Yeah, now with the injury to Puka, I guess they're thinking that you know the other guys will get more targets. Fair enough. Two dollars right there. That's fine. I'll and- give you. Adam for him. I'm actually surprised Bigsby wasn't on the team before that. And I'm kind of now that he's only gotten 7.3 points, I'm surprised he is on the team now for $19. <laughs> he, I mean, if, if Etienne goes down, he's going to be utilized uh, a lot. And he was utilized as a pass catcher. And so sure. I think so $19 you know, though. I mean, whatever. It's not, it's not, it's not an insane. Yeah, I, I thought people, I thought people would pay for him. They did. Just you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I knew I was going up against Gronky Kong and Eugene, like I certainly would have paid less because I feel like they're like the, the, the two cheapest. The cheapest um, guys. They are the, the- 
Well, well, Eugene is the cheapest until he wants somebody, and then he's he goes insane. Like he will he will spend right. like the the eighty ninety dollars on the guy that he wants. That's true. Um, but I knew that. He wasn't, you know, that's not going to be one of those guys. Yeah. No, I know. I, uh, right. Uh, yeah, no. I, 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 I guess my bigger question was, why didn't you pick up Bigsby <laughs> prior to the game? Like, I'm sure he was available. I didn't know he would be utilized that much. Okay. Okay. So you saw the performance and you liked it. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Um, and then some other transactions that we had. Uh, as I said, I <laughs> dropped Hubbard into the garbage can. For Baker, it's not even so much. Look, I dropped Hubbard because he sucked and he's on a sucky team and he's going to be replaced. So that was just dead weight. And I figured, why not take a flyer on Baker this week as he plays Detroit? So we'll see how he does there. My two quarterbacks going against each other. Madison being picked up by the finest. I actually think that that is a that's a good move. Uh, 16 points. We'll see how he does next week. But, you know. Good move. I have no problem about that. Jeff Wilson picked up by the Hagglers. Also a good move. Um, I Is A-Chain playing this week? No. He's, no. he's a game time decision. Mostert is out. A-Chain right now could technically still be in. Yeah, cool. that, that was a good move. I was looking at that. I just, I didn't, I'm probably going to play Bigsby instead. I don't want to play someone in that. No, uh, that's, that, 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 and that's especially good move given that you have um, Mostert. So I, I, you know, I mean, he he was declared out early, which was fortunate. And usually they wait, so I just right. right. And it's a you know it's an early week game, so I definitely think you know, especially if um if A chain is out as well, you know, then that's definitely yeah. I bad. wanted to play Wilson, but then I was like, ah, oh, it's, it's a tough spot against Buffalo and Thursday night. I'm I'm just gonna play Bigsby. I I don't want to waste a roster spot in Wilson. So yeah, but there's but a problem. The other guy too, Jalen Wright. Mm-hmm. Because he could be the next A chain. I don't like how Miami does it with their roster. There's no clear cut second guy. Yeah, but yeah. but I, but I will say, having had um, <laughs> most even with A chain last year, they all seem to get points. If they're playing, they they the 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 the, the, the uh, running backs tend to get points. So, and and I mean, certainly given the the situation that you know you having most I think that that's definitely an important pickup. So no problem there. The guy whose name I didn't even realize was an I instead of an L. Um, he's released after a 5.6 performance um, for a kicker. A uh, kicker that I was looking at, by the way. So you know. He sucks. But no, it's not he sucks. The team sucks. Who? The Giants. They're hard. Uh, who, who Boswell's playing? Are you talking about Graham Gano? Oh no! I was just talking about Boswell. I was looking at Boswell because I, th- uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember. I, the only reason I up like he just, I think he made field goals at like fifty six, fifty seven, like forty three and forty. That's ridiculous for a kicker. At least so yeah, he had a uh, he had a bunch. I I which is why I was looking at him. I I mean it was between him and Folk mm-hmm. that I was deciding between, and I ended up going with Folk. But um, I think Boswell's just as good a choice i didn't know i i think the the hesitation was more well it was two things one i didn't know if it was a fluke that boswell got all those opportunities and two um their coach there in, in pittsburgh he loves he, he he loves to not go for an extra point a lot of the time and he, i i just stay away from the pittsburgh kicker because he just annoys me i mean look look so 57 56 51 44 yeah. 40, and, i mean Obviously, they have no offense. Correct. I mean, look, he had 27 points last week. I just don't know if it was more an Atlanta thing or if it was more, um, you know, a, a a Steelers thing. I But I certainly looked into him. I think it's well worth taking a flyer on, especially if you said you had Gano or was was your kicker, the Giants kicker? The Giants kicker, the Giants are terrible. Yeah, so obviously, no brainer to pick him up, especially with what, you know, was available. Absolutely. No problem there. Then what else do we have? Uh, Jalen Wright was picked up by you. So you have both of them now? I had to get both of them to see who would start. Oh, well, yeah. So great. Your, your pot committee, you'll see. You'll make the game time decision. Uh, very smart on both of those. Uh, so Taysom Hill gets dropped for, for a Macintosh. What's going on here? Well, I don't know anything about him. Zero points. Looking great. <laughs> that was Macintosh. 
Um, because Kenneth Walker left in the fourth what? quarter with an abdominal injury. Why would you? Is there something I don't know about Macintosh? I don't know because he's the backup to Charbonnet. So because I mean, Kenneth Walker went back, back up to Walker, he's the backup to the backup. He's the backup to the backup. They have a Macintosh apple with a Chardonnay. With hero <laughs> point team. What's the what's the appeal? I don't get it. Well, he's projected to get a point five one. So I mean, hero. <laughs> I, 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 or, or is that his actual? <laughs> I mean, he's clearly getting. I, I don't. I. I guess he's getting the backup to the back who's playing now in case Kenneth Walker, because he <laughs> left with an abdominal injury, carried How many into. People have to get hurt before Macintosh gets in the game. That's the question. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, why are you playing? He's so Macintosh should line up as the clear number two back behind Charbonnet. That's that's. So what happened to Walker? Is he out? I guess according to he has an abdominal injury. I, I don't know what's. Uh, I mean, let's see. Um, let's see. Walker. <laughs> um, what is Walker out? All I know is in season one, Gronky Khan, we sent Manny over to his house to investigate what he was reading. <laughs> Ever since that, I, I don't, I don't know what he just he lost yeah, the. So- uh, right, so Oblique did not practice on Wednesday. Walker left in the final minutes of the Se- Seahawks' Week 1 victory. But told reporters after that he was feeling good. He now starts out Week 2 as a non-participant in practice attributed to an oblique injury. If Walker can practice later in the week, it would be good news for his Week 2 status. But if he cannot, yeah. Zach Charbonnet is bumped up to RB2 upside. One up, he already dropped that. What? If you go one transaction up, he already dropped him. Oh well, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> talking about it for nothing. <laughs> yeah, we had this whole guy. Co- well, I, I, I don't even. Yeah, like uh, okay. All right. Um. Right. So then he drops him for just tail, which way makes w- way more sense. Yeah. And he did it in the same minute. <laughs> Maybe he just clicked on the wrong thing. Like <laughs> we actually talked about this for more time than Macintosh was on his roster. Right. Okay. Right. But just tail makes total sense. I was looking at him. As well, um, you know, Derrick Henry back up. He already had 11.5 points. Good pick up there. Um, and that's about it. All right. So, so I, when did you see Manny in, in Wandale Robinson of the Giants? I mean, that offense is putrid. Putrid, but he's the only, like, viable target. Except for, like, a good neighbors. Yeah. yeah. He- just criticized. He did have he did have ten points, so you know he he's he is getting targeted. Um, so that was it. Like to be a primary target, I feel like you have to be on the team as a receiver. You know, you do have to be on a team to be a kind of kind of like how Thielen is on your team. Uh, yeah, you know I mean- what I mean. Like, for what Jones had to work with, he did get a lot of targets. Twelve, I think it was twelve. That's a lot of targets. Yeah, it's a lot of targets. I mean, it's it's like feeling on your team. I feel, you know, like I think that Carolina yeah. right now is you just stay away from hockey. Had good instincts to drop feeling like they're, they're hard. They're and hard. Picked, and yeah. he picked up uh, Chicago for it. So we, yeah, that was another whole conversation, and he ends up, <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So yeah, looking at the standings, I mean, not much to look at right now. So Tillett uh, in first place, Zamunda in last. So um, I'm. Is the one always been in last after week one? Maybe you should expect to look up. No. Um. Also, yeah. So I'm in sixth. So I do have the win, but I had the lowest win total l- being lower than um, an eighth place team. You actually you're... outplayed me. So as you're trying to do a fire sale, you still outplayed uh, or outscored my team. Well, so well, you're the spider this year. I'm I, look, I will I will be I will gladly be the spider. <laughs> if you want to get trapped in my web, I will be more than happy. I will be more than satisfied. Um, yeah, and uh, waiver money. So Eugene still has over. He's, he's got two goals, three, and two or two for Doctor Hockey. I mean, you know, not much money used. It's the first week, but uh, you know, good lead for uh, Tillip there. All right, 
let's look I have at to Manny and Hockey twice this year. That's a nightmare. What's that? I have to play Manny and Dr. Hockey two times this year. I'm, I'm not happy about that. I have to play uh, Tillett and Whalers twice this year, so I'm not happy about that. Uh-oh. Um, But sure, you want to talk about your game with uh, Dr. Hockey? Let's... I'm not going to give him any bulletin board material. <laughs> I mean, he already has your. He already has a, a framed picture of your ass hanging. He's shaking his face from thirty years. That, that just gets him riled up. I was hoping not to mention that. I mean, you know, he, he the man has it out for you and everything. So you he, know, because this is the one thing he could be zero and twelve, and and he'll be geared up for my game. Yeah, because of some incident. I wonder. Do you think? Do you think he would have gone as high for Tyreek Hill in the auction if it wasn't you? Oh, I know he was trying to stick it to me. I mean, it's just it's hockey's mo. Um. Well, all right. So the projection in this game is one seventeen point five two to one oh nine point six two in favor of Doctor Hockey, a fifty six percent favorite. Um. So take it away. What do you, What do you see happening? And it, I mean, CJ Stroud versus Stefan Diggs last week. Now it's going to be Tua versus. Stephon. My opponent always loves to just take away the receiver with the by having that quarterback. I mean, Moomera is probably going to bounce back because Detroit did a lot of running in that game against the Rams, but they're going to get back to throwing it. Um, Jamar Chase, mm, it's going to be a shootout versus Kansas City. That's going to be a big game right there. Cook in Buffalo versus Miami, and... I could go either way. What did he do last week? He got he got 13 points last week. He's actually a, a, a decent running back cook. <clears throat> uh, Harrison, I mean, Pittsburgh is just horrendous. But he almost got 10 points. I mean, he got more than Mostert. He got triple what Mostert got last week. And Mostert is out with an unknown variable at running back. Kittle, they mostly went with the running game. And he still got eight points. <clears throat> so he's fine. He's finally put the X factor in there. Worthy, this guy could blow up like Nitro. I mean, he barely touched the ball for 20.8 points last week on three touches. That guy is ridiculous. And then, of course, he's got the defense that I dropped. He's going to rub it. He's going to shake his ass in my face with Chicago. (laughs) Although they play Houston, which could put up some points, but it it doesn't matter. And then Fairbairn, his kicker last week, went off like Nitro for 17 points again. So, I mean, I think Dr. Hockey is geared up. Don't be surprised to have him make some surprise moves before the, the week is over. And then, um, you know, I just threw together a Patrick. If Angum sucks it up for 1.4 points, he's going to be in the dumpster. Let I'm not even going to bother trading him. And we got Wilson. I don't know who's going to start. And just, this entire team is, a, is a you know, underperforming week one mess. <clears throat> but, you know, Dr. Hockey always gets geared up. Uh, I don't know. I, I think the, the two. Uh, to I'm not a big fan of the Philadelphia defense against Atlanta. I mean, Green Bay really had. You know, good success against them, I mean, even on that really defense. How can you go wrong? He sucks. Yeah, exactly. They're playing Atlanta, who was pretty bad last week. Yeah, yeah but they and also and played and the and Pittsburgh. And how much do you really want to judge off that? Um, I, I, I and I agree that I don't think that they have that uh, that great a secondary. But uh, how much do you want to judge off that Brazil game? I, I'm not really. I'm not ready to. No, everybody was complaining about the field. Everyone was slipping all over the place. Yeah. So um, I'm telling yeah, you, yeah, they still couldn't. Stop. Cousins loves to get himself sacked and throw picks. Yeah. And um, Chicago going up against Tennessee and you'll love it at Levis. He's actually going up against CJ Stroud in a decent offense this time for Chicago's defense. So that I don't think you're going to put up 24, <laughs> but we'll see. Yeah. And uh, for all you, I, Evan- I don't know. I'm, I'm on, um, I'm on, on uh, odd one here. I think uh, oh, his I- edge in, his edge in RB in running backs is just too big here. Yeah, my two running backs are hot garbage. I mean, as bad as happened mm-hmm. last year, are you still better than these two losers? Uh, I, I I don't know. Look, Najee only got eight point nine nine. Now he's going against Denver this week, which is definitely an advantage. I think. All right, like Zach Moss, what did he do last week? <laughs> yeah, he's point I, one. I mean, I, like, so. Zach Moss did fine. I think Jeff Wilson, the projection is way lower than it's going to be if he plays. And if he doesn't play and it's Warren, you've got him too. So I think, I mean, like, what are they projecting? Um, 
where is he? Right. Excuse me. Right. Jamil Wright over there for four <laughs> seven. Um, no, I think that you'll be fine at, at running back. I mean, I think you got I, the, the unfortunate thing is you're going to have to hope that they hand it off for touchdowns in this game because Tyreek Hill is going to be, you know, you're going to have two of throwing to Tyreek. Um, so that's going to hurt. I mean, if anything's going to hurt, that's going to be what hurts the most there. Mm-hmm. I think Prescott has a bounce back game. I think that that uh, I think in New Orleans, it's going to be uh, much more of a, uh, you know, a shootout there. Devontae Adams against Baltimore. That's a tough matchup. Um, I also look, I, I think Chase at Kansas City is going to be a little bit of a tough matchup, too. I mean, what did he do? 12.2. I don't think he's necessarily going to. I don't know. Uh, I do agree that St. Brown is going to have a bounce back game because I think that that game is going to be a shootout between Detroit and Tampa Bay. Um, Look, I think Cook matches up with Moss. I think Wilson outperform or Wilson or, you know, WrestleMania man uh, outperforms uh, Harris there. Ingram and Kittle, neither of these guys were good. So we'll see what happens in this. I, I, I don't know. Um, I mean, I guess give the edge to Kittle, but he's going against Minnesota. I don't, I don't know. And then Diggs and Worthy are that's that's I mean twenty one for Diggs, and then you you know Worthy had twenty. I, like so, all right. Yeah. I mean, like it's a fairly even matchup. You picked up the kicker, who by the way got twenty seven points last week. Let's see if that was you know based on we're going to see if it's based on the team or not. And you got uh, Philadelphia going against Atlanta, and then you know I I think that the Chicago defense. By the way, Chicago defense. Uh, you know, they did get the touchdown at the end of the game. So they got, you know, that six points there. I mean, uh, is that going to happen? We'll see. Um, I think it's a lot closer than you're you're giving it first blush. I do think that, the, I, look, I'm going to lean Dr. Hockey, and I'm going to lean that way because Tua is throwing to, to Hill, and I think that that's the one advantage he has there. But otherwise, I think that this is a fairly even matchup. And I think it's really dependent on how well Dak does. Things can come down to that. Uh, Dak didn't really have to do much. I mean, Cleveland's offense was terrible. Exactly. So, and I think that's why I think he's going to have a much better game. So, I think it's 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 a question of how well Dak does next week, and whether or not, excuse me, whether or not the running backs in Miami are the ones that get the touchdowns versus Tyreek Hill. That's so. Uh, but I'm going to I'm going to give the slight edge to Doctor Hockey just at this point. Until I see somebody do anything, I'm going to give the edge to Doctor Hockey as well. But the thing is, I also don't think that the Buffalo defense is that good either. So I think Tua and Tyreek are going to go go off. Um. So you know mm-hmm. if I mean if Tua has three touchdowns to Waddle, then obviously he's going to win. But like I, you know, I could also see Tyreek having two touchdowns. Yeah, so, I think I think a surprising amount comes down to that the, to that Thursday night game. Which it usually doesn't, but I think this okay. week. Yeah. All right. All right. Next game. Um, we'll do mine. Um, me versus Tillett. So the projection right now is one twenty one point three seven to one twenty one point oh nine, a fifty fifty uh, chance on each of this. Uh, speaking about that Monday, that Thursday night game, you have Josh Allen going against Miami on Thursday night. Um, share the screen. What? Share the screen. Oh, am I not sharing the screen? I feel uh, so bad for everybody. I haven't shared it this entire time. What are you? What are you? What are you guys doing? No, yeah, you did it in the first time. Yeah, well, whatever. All right. So then you have um, all right. You have uh, Josh Allen going against Goff right now. Um, I think that. So here. Uh, hmm. I do think that this Tampa Bay game is going to be a shootout. I do have Baker on the on the bench, and I I, I question which of the two to play right now. Um, I think that Josh Allen is going to do well in Miami. I think we're going to have to see how well. Um, Nico versus Chicago is going to be good, and then you have the Godwin versus Evans battle right there. So that that's going to neutralize itself right there. Um, Bijan and Brees Hall going against Mixon and White. I think there's a slight edge in running back for me, but I wouldn't say that it's that um, much. Um, you know, Cooks, I actually saw, I didn't mention Cooks. I think Cooks, he's got a revenge game against um, the Saints, so I actually think he, I, I have a lot of confidence in him this week. So I think that's an under projection there. Um, 
Look, I, I got to hope that my bride does better, and he's got to hope that Kincaid does better. And then you got uh, DJ Moore versus Rasheed Rice. Um, you're, you know, you got Folk going against the Jets, so the Jets just gave up all those points to Moody. That's kind of why I went with Folk this week. And then the the Chargers defense going against that Carolina team, which is why I picked them up. He's got Baltimore going against Vegas. That's a good uh, matchup there. And he's got uh, the uh, Miami kicker as well. So, I mean, look, it's 50-50 projection. You know, I always pick my opponent, so I'm obviously I'm going to pick Jim. But I think this is, this one really is a toss. This is going to be a close game. It's going to be a good game. Uh-huh. Oh, Evans versus Godwin? Definitely. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean... Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I think all around it's just. A, I I mean, I, I think Josh Allen's probably going to determine a lot here. We'll see. I don't know. I mean, I think he has the decided edge in quarterback and receiver, but I think you have the edge in running back. I think you have the edge in tight end. You have the edge in flex. So it's it's a it's very very close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but are you gonna? So, who do you pick? Um, right now, I think Allen. After but Allen won, goes on Thursday night, I'm, I'm gonna go with you, Dave. I think, uh, I think you edge this one out. I think you have the edge in your edge in running back, flex, and uh, tight end. I think that will kind of pay the difference. Plus, I like your defense more than. Well, I mean that's a good that's a good pick too. Mm-hmm. Baltimore against Vegas. Yeah, that's a good that's a good. Uh, yeah. yeah, both defenses look good here. Um, yes, yeah, slight edge to you. And Gies, I'm going with Kimmel. Any reason? No, yeah, I just like it. Like you said, I like the team. They're explosive. They got they got almost every position covered. I think Kincaid. You know, underperformed last week, but he's gonna. He's got potential for two first from Josh Allen. Um, I mean, Caleb Williams only had ninety three yards passing last week against the the Titans. I think he he you know he throws it for more. DJ Moore is going to be a big target for him. Um, Rice is definitely really big for you. Uh, but overall, I think that Tillett just it's just the onslaught of Tillett is just too much this week. Mm, that's a fair assessment. All right, let's move on to the uh, to the current champ versus. Uh, so, uh, were you? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I I guess you weren't. You did play each other, right? What was it two years ago? Three years ago already? I don't even know. The time flies. Uh, but whatever. The champ, the own one champ, going against uh, the commish. So. Uh, Right now, the projection is 121 to 108.82. You are a 60% favorite in this game. What do you see happening here? Why is this so... Is he not made... What has he done? Is he not made any... What's going on? Is he missing no, something? Just his lineup. His lineup is just like yeah. that? Okay. All right. <laughs> well, um, uh, we'll go through it. Somebody's- um... Well, I, I like CJ against uh against the Bears. Um I like CJ in general. I think he's just he's just a good quarterback. A lot of weapons. Um doesn't turn the ball over that much. So I, I think he's he's gonna, you know, meet his projection. Um hopefully does a little better than that, but we'll see. Uh AJ Brown against Atlanta on Monday night. Um I think the uh the Eagles offense is, is pretty Pretty high powered, to be honest, especially with the addition of Saquon. I think that, you know, that opens up the passing game um, some more. So I think that that's uh, he'll 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 be pretty good. Um, I'm hoping for a bounce back with Marvin Harrison. Um, I think that that was a one off. I mean, I'm, I'm going to give him another chance. He's going to be my starting line, but another one point performance and you're 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 done. <laughs> um, I don't care that I have family that goes to Ohio State. Doesn't matter. You're 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 out with one more performance like that. Um, we'll see if a chain plays plays. I think he's a game time decision, but he was a limited participant in in practice. Uh, so I'm hopeful that he's going to play. Um, I know uh, Lutsky's not. 
our the Hagglers. I mean, you have Madison we'll to see. replace him if you need to, or Bigsby. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll yeah, this is I didn't see. <clears throat> Jacobs is also questionable. I think he's uh can can you click what's up with him? He has a back was back. Like Ew. Um he says come on, you play early in the week and then you're injured. It says nothing more than maintenance unless something changes. So he'll he'll be fine. So they have Malik Willis uh at quarterback, so that might open up the run game, but um Are they actually going know, with we'll him? We'll see. I think so. He looked horrid on that two play like, was, okay. <laughs> on the Titans. Is that where he was? I don't know. I just meant he looked hard at the end of the game, you know, like for the two plays that he had to play in that game. Yeah. But they're going to be running the ball a lot. So, if, you know, if, as long as he gets a lot of touches, I mean, it's not necessarily good for the run game, but like, you know, the more touches you get, like it's it's good as a fantasy owner, I guess. Uh, Laporte against Tampa Bay. I think that that's, uh, you know, I got to play Laporte. He's my, my starting tight end. Uh, going with the jumbo package again with, with Godert. Um, but I gotta, I gotta see, think about those other running backs as well. Um, so he did have an oblique injury, I think. So uh, I like Moody as my kicker, obviously, in the Dallas defense. I'm just gonna stick with them. Um, as far as the Whalers, um, I like you know for. He's putting Ford in the starting lineup. I think that's a good play. Um, good Parkinson might get some more targets with Nakua out. Um, I like Safe Flowers. I have him in my other leagues. Um, I think he's he could be due for a big game. I think he's an underrated receiver. I think he's Lamar's top target at wide receiver for sure. So I kind of like that. Um, yeah, I I think I have the slight edge here, but. You know, it, it depends if, if a chain plays um, depends how effective Jacobs is. So I think the projection is a little bit inflated. Um, I think it should be closer than that, but I, I would I'm going to pick. I, I think I have the slight advantage here. What's your assessment? I think you have the significant advantage here. Um, <laughs> I think it's slight. Look, Richardson, I think. uh We'll be fine. Okay. He's playing at Green Bay. We'll we'll see if he can perform like he did last week. Um, I I mean, will Olave come back? I I don't know what's going on there. I mean, Pittman, he didn't do anything. I mean, like I I guess if these guys come, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, Connor was fine, right? Wasn't he? Nineteen points. Yeah. So Connor is consistently good. Ford, I do agree, it was a good. The placement there. I mean, is Parkinson really going to do anything in Zay Flowers? What did he do? Eleven point one. I mean, it's fine. He'll do he had fine, ten but... targets. What? He had ten targets, and I think they're going to demolish uh, Vegas. Sure, uh, uh, I agree. I just think the Pittman Olave thing. Uh, there's a lot of weaknesses there. I mean, but you have weakness at with Harrison, Marvin Harrison Jr. I mean, I'm even. Maybe put in Lazard. I mean, I would maybe put in Lazard instead. I mean, do you really want to risk? I don't know. I mean, because he's going against Tennessee, who sucks. I don't know. Mm. I, 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 because I think that the advantage that you have certainly is in wide receiver. You know, if you have AJ, I, I think he has some wi weak wide receivers. I think that. You have one very strong wide receiver in a good matchup. And then I think you have Harrison, who's a question mark after last week. He could be great. He could not. I don't know. Do you really want to, like, would you go with that? Or do you want to go with the hot hand with, with Lazard? I don't know. But I... I, I might go Lazard and uh, Harrison as my receivers and then put A.J. Brown as the Monday Night Flex. Um, I might do that. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. Although, yeah. Instead of Goder, um maybe i mean Scroll like, to my bench again. um i don't like madison this week against baltimore sure i kind of like wandell robinson actually against washington yeah washington i think washington, washington sucks yeah i mean maybe you do brown um 
Um, Wanda Allen. Robinson and then mm -hmm. Marvin Harrison as my flex. No, I would do Lazard. I would. Why wouldn't you want to play Lazard? He had twenty six points last week against San Francisco. Yeah, but they also have Mike Williams. They have Garrett Wilson. Like, well, I don't know. Okay, I mean, I mean, that's also possible. Who else? I mean, like, I, yeah, you could stick <laughs> with Harrison. I mean, if he does well, then it's fine. Yeah, I'm probably gonna not play Goder. I'll just play. Yeah. Of course, I hate giving advice because then when I'm wrong, it comes back to bite me and I get criticized for it. So by all means, do do what you will do. I do think that, uh, yeah. Interesting. The other thing is, is McCaffrey going to play? I saw some things. He's still limited. Why is he? Why? By the way. Why is Mason not in the game at all? Does he think Minnesota is that good? I mean, take out Olave or Pittman. I think the game. I I think this dynamic changes if he takes out Olave or Pittman. You know, puts, puts in flowers. Yeah, put flowers. flowers up to one of the receivers, and then puts um, um, know. you know, Mason at least at the flat. You know, Mason or 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 um. I hope he doesn't do that, but or McCaffrey yeah. hit the flex. You know, whoever. <laughs> I mean, that seems to make the most sense to me. I mean, I, I do think that Ford in there is a good play. I think that his running back core is, is, is solid. You put the two of them there, and then, yeah, I, I think that's the obvious play right there. And I think if he does that, then that changes the dynamic of this game significantly, and I might change my, my pick if that were to happen. But right now, obviously, I go with you. And he's not going to do it because you suggested it. I mean, I but I think it, it boils down to A-Chain. Like, is A-Chain going to play? You know, like that's a big for thing you. Too. Um, yeah. but you have enough backups there that you, you can handle some stuff there. And it's early enough that you can make the adjustments. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really want to play Bigsby against Cleveland, to be honest. Like, for sure. Why not? And Madison versus Baltimore is no picnic either. No, the matchups are horrible. So, like, I'm really hoping A chain plays, but if he doesn't, I'll probably have to go. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I think that, I mean, look, I think that those circumstances could certainly significantly change the outcome. But given yeah. how it's stated right now, I'm going to go with you. Okay. All right. <laughs> and Geese, did you have I'm, a I'm going to go with Manny on a slight edge right now. I mean, Alave doesn't have a great matchup. Hmm. I mean, Manny's got options. I mean, it all depends on A-Chain. Right right now, I'm slightly favoring Friedman. Because, like you said, he's, he's got to get Flowers over to a lobby spot. It's, it's a much better matchup. I mean, it's a great matchup. It's a cake matchup versus, yeah. you know, Trayvon Diggs versus Olave. You don't want to be banking on that. Mm -hmm. And then get either Mason or McCaffrey in the other spot. It's a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm gonna play uh, Wandell Robinson. I've decided on that. Yeah. Yeah. As it stands right now, the slight slight edge to Manny. Yeah. All right. So where do we go to next? We've done hour three, which leaves the other <laughs> ones. So we could go. Let's go with Nick and Jamie versus the Lightning Rods. Um. So the projection right here is Nick and Jamie 119.95 to 114.50. Nick and Jamie a 55% favorite. Um, so they got Herbert at Carolina. That should be a good match right there. Burrow <laughs> at Kansas City. I, you know, we'll see if it's uh that should be the better matchup, but only 8.6 points. I, I don't know. I give the edge to Herbert right now, especially going against Carolina. If Debo going against Jefferson. Um, I think Minnesota is a little, you know, a tougher matchup than they had last week. Um, but, um, you know, still 18.7 for Debo. But Jefferson, I mean, they're playing each other. So that's an interesting dynamic in that game. Drake London has got to get out of there. Um, although, you know, as you said, the Philadelphia defense and especially the secondary did not impress you. Keenan Allen, he didn't do anything either. Uh, and he's got a heel injury. 
So that's questionable. Now, obviously, Saquon is going to do well, and Gibbs, that's where the strength of his team is. Aaron Jones did well, and now he's got Brian Robinson in there as well. So good, decent matchups down, you know, so I think that the, the running backs are sh- strong. I, I feel like they're matching each other up pretty evenly. Like, they have the, the, the crappy players going against the crappy players and the good players going against the good players. He's got likely against Kelsey, which, you know, I mean, based on last week's performance, you give the edge to likely based on historical performances, you give it to Kelsey. So it's very interesting there. You got Garrett Wilson going against um, uh, Jaden Reed, who got 33 and he's going against uh, Indianapolis this week. Mm -hmm. Um. Pittsburgh defense, I would slightly, or Pittsburgh defense, I would give the edge to in points. I mean, obviously, San Francisco did fine, but yeah, I think I'm going to give the edge in this game to Nick and Jamie. Certainly, I would set up right now. I mean, with Drake London in there and stuff. Yeah, I'm going to give the edge to to Nick and Jamie. I would well, agree with that. The running back to Brandon Jones is going up against San Francisco. That's definitely going to be where Barkley is going up against Porous Atlanta. Robinson against the Giants. And Wilson, Tennessee. Pittsburgh going up against Denver, who sucks. Their quarterback is terrible. Mm-hmm. But then you got Jerk. No, no, not Jerk. Not, who is their quarterback in Minnesota? Uh, Sam Darnold. Donald actually was carving up the Giants, but yeah, I know. I saw actually I saw something funny it was saying like um Darnold is, is tearing it up. Um uh Gino Gino Smith tore it up last year. Um if they just uh, send Zach Wilson to an, another team and he starts tearing it up, maybe the Jets actually drafted really well. It's just them. <laughs> wow. So Debo against Minnesota. Keenan Allen, he's still injured. He's <laughs> <laughs> um, he's got the heel injury this time. Okay, Barkley. Um, wow, this is this is an interesting matchup. Also, so who who do we give it to? I mean, it was likely just a fun. I mean, they're playing the Raiders. Yeah. Yeah, yep. I think uh, he should be projected for more than eight points. But the problem is that powerhouse running back lineup for Nick and Jamie is awesome. I don't love Keenan Allen because their their quarterback is terrible. Right. Mm, Debo. I mean, if San Francisco is clearly running the ball with a buck forty seven last week with their star running back, the backup to McCaffrey. I mean, they're they're run committed. Kittle didn't do shit. Debo got. I mean, what did he get? He got what eight? Well, he got eighteen. He got his points, but it was on a rushing touchdown. So he is part of the running game. So that's a factor. I gotta give this actually to Nick and Jamie. Mm-hmm. It's it's close. I gotta give. I, I'm gonna go Nick and Jamie. I mean, I think that uh, we're all in agreement there. All right. So moving on. Um, I guess we go. We did Zamunda. So what do we have left? Did we do Zamunda versus? No, no, we just did our games and then Nick and Jamie. So we didn't yeah, do so Zamunda versus Kong and Zamunda. Oh, wow. I would have thought we would have gotten this trash pile over with pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, 127.65 to a 101.29 projection. 71% favorite for Grumpy Kong here. Nick has no... Wow. What kind of defense? It's not going to make much of a difference. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Gonna, well, yeah. Um. Okay. So you got Mahomes versus Kyler Murray. Surprisingly, um, Murray had he outscored uh, Mahomes last week, but by like a point. Um. I, you know, I did he sixteen point one eight to your incorrect. Oh, no, Mahomes did all right. So, but still, um, Lamb. Those are like two best receivers in the league. Yeah, for, for who? For versus <laughs> Lamb. If yeah. he's even out by Sunday. Yeah, well, although I think Cup is going to outperform him, especially with the Puka being injured. <laughs> um, Arizona's defense was also atrocious against Buffalo. 
Yeah, so lock it. He's questionable. I mean, there's always what what is going on over in Seattle? And then Williams Jameson Williams 24, but he has uh, an ankle injury. Um Pacheco versus uh Kyron Williams. What what did Williams do last week? 14. Okay. And Pacheco did 15. Pretty even there. Kenneth Walker, we've already seen the possible uh we've already had a long discussion about that. Um but uh, Justice Hill, I mean he could play Singletary, what did he do? 9.2. Yeah, I mean that Kenneth Walker thing could be an issue, but you know, Gus the Bus, did he do anything? 3.8. So no. And that's his starter, and he has no does he have any replacements there? He does not. Okay, so that's really where Nick is in trouble. <laughs> Mark Andrews obviously underperformed, but you have Dalton Schultz, who only got 4.6, and he's questionable, may not play due to an ankle. Oh my god, this is a trash pile. Um, Devonta Smith got 15 going against J.K. Dobbins, who he was good. All right, 22.9. Yeah, the cats. I mean, like, I mean, Butker versus Zerline. Um, I think Zerline did all right, didn't he? Because, and by all right, I mean one point. No, he did. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm picking. Rocky Kong and I don't is there like is there any any hope that we see for Nick? Yeah, but I I think the total the projection is a bit inflated. Like one twenty seven is a ridiculous pro- projection. Like I agree. Up and Mahomes are going to do well, obviously, but you know if if Mahomes does well, that probably takes away from Pacheco a little bit, and vice versa. So I think that could cancel each other out. I think Williams is okay, but that that you know the ankle is a question mark. Um, Seattle is just like it's a weird team, and I think the New England defense is actually a little bit better than expected. So I don't think that that's a you know a shoe in that he gets his thirteen points there. Um, if likely, you know, is the guy in Baltimore. I think Andrews could be compromised. I mean. I think it's smart to put Andrews in there just to like kind of gauge where he where he's at, but um, I don't necessarily think he gets his eleven. Smith, you know, it all depends on you know who um, who they cover. Like, is it going to be Smith or is it going to be AJ Brown? So they have a lot of weapons there. Also with Barkley, so I I don't know. I it's good, but it's not like. It's great. I, I still give the edge to Gronky Kong, but it's definitely not that big. Yeah, I agree. I mean, especially when you're talking, I think the the major weakness would be Gus Edwards, and but otherwise, um, well, and, you know, and I think the major positive for Gronky Kong is Cup at this point. I think he's going to go insane. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, and, and, and and the Kenneth Walker situation is something to monitor. Yeah, yeah. And Keys, are you going to go out on a limb and pick? Uh, I, just, I just looked at the numbers. On, I mean, so Nick spent eighty five dollars on CD Lamb and then fifty six dollars on Kyron Williams, and then the rest of this team is what you can cobble together once you shell out all that money. Um, I just I'm just questioning where are the points going to come from. <laughs> this is this is Gus the bus. Is he going to get you any points? I mean, he's playing. He's yeah, I, I like those two pickups, with Lamb and, and Kyron Williams. I just think he overpaid for those guys. So, like, that leaves just no room for him. So, he's playing two yeah. Chargers running backs right now Gus the Bus and Dobbins. I mean, Dobbins did fine. I mean, what did Gus the Bus get? Three points? Um, he got uh, three points. Oh, I shouldn't even be talking. <laughs> I, I, I really Dowdle, Dowdle, I doubt he'll do anything. <laughs> One, two. I mean, Joshua Palmer was supposed to be the big, big uprising there in the Chargers. He got 3.5 points. I mean, who do the Chargers throw to? Uh, McConkey. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, I got to take I, – I, I, I mean, you got to take Ronky Kong right now. Especially Cup could probably – I mean, he might keep up with Lamb. That's the only person that can, can match him. But Pacheco, Walker, I mean, if he's going to play. Uh, I got to take Ronky Kong in this one. 
Yeah. I mean, look, I, I, I do think that the, 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 the lopsidedness of the projection does also have something to do with the fact that Nick doesn't have any defense in there. So hopefully that'll improve, but yeah, no, I still, I still think that he certainly Gronky Khan would be favored. All right. And that brings us to uh, the last game, which is the game with the fan. All right. So the projection right here is 114.94 to 112.94, a slight edge, 52 to 48% edge to Dave's secret crush in this game. So we have, we're going to, I think we're going to have some pretty high uh, QB points here. So we got Lamar Jackson going against Vegas and then Jalen Hurts versus Atlanta. I think that those are going to produce pretty big numbers out of both of those guys. Then you got Ayuk versus Metcalf. Um, <laughs> Two losers. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So then moving on, then Dell versus Waddle. I, okay. So 16.2 for Waddle, 8.9 for Dell. Oh, so and out right now in Houston seems to be Dell. Because Nico gets his numbers and Diggs is getting a lot of attention. There's only so many footballs. You got to hand it off to Mixon for 26 points last week. Who suffers? It's probably Dell. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, a, a guy in uh, my other league has been just like giving trade offers for Tank Dell, like left and right. Like, I'll give you Dell for this guy. I'll give you Dell for this guy. <laughs> like, uh. yeah. Um, Etienne and Kamara, I think Kamara, I, look, I, I, you know, I think versus Henry and Taylor, I think those are good running backs around. Look, uh, so yeah, so we're giving the edge on the wide receiver to to Waddle over Dell. And then I think, I think the, the overall running backs, I think that they all balance each other out kind of in this matchup. Um, yeah. Well, I, I give it to a uh, clever name pending. I think, uh, Henry and Taylor, you think that the okay. yeah, especially in that matchup, I think Henry's going to get some goal line carries there. So I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Um, Bowers, what did he do? Eleven point eight. One of the better performing uh, tight ends last week. Fryer was got like nothing. Six point seven. Um, at Denver for Fryer I think he. I, I uh, who's is is it going to be Russell or is it going to be um Fields? It's Fields, right? I think it's Fields for now. Yeah, it's fields, yeah I yeah. think that might inf- impact Fryermuth. Bowers going against Baltimore. That's a much tougher matchup there. I don't know. McConkey against Carolina. I think McConkey does well in that matchup. I and then agree. you have Neighbors against at Washington. I mean, I think Neighbors does really well in that matchup too. Um, and Tucker and Aubrey and Houston at Buffalo. Um, I give you Gene a slight edge here. Yeah, I give I you Gene a slight edge as well. Um, but it's just—I mean, it's just bare. I think it's the Waddle Dell thing. I think that's really where that that this this game turn. You know, I think that that's what the edge is in this game. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the slight edge to running back for Bowtie. I, I think the tight end is oof. I think it's even an I mean look I pretty even the matchup is better for Bowtie, but I think the Bowards is better in general. I think neighbors and McConkey are actually good both good plays this week against putrid defenses. And yep. then I think uh Eugene has the edge on defense with Houston. Well, I think, but I also, I think he really has the edge. I mean, I think it's the Waddle versus Dell thing that, that, that makes the difference yeah. in this game. I mean, the other ones, I, you know. But I'm going sure. to. I mean, first of all, I know better than to not go with Eugene unless I feel confident to not go with Eugene. And this <laughs> is certainly not a game that I don't feel confident going with Eugene. So. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. Clearly. Close. Hmm? I'll go close. with Eugene. The fan. A lot of close matchups this week. Yeah, I feel there like. are. I actually have a, a problem picking out the blowout of the week. I don't even know. Well, obviously. Well, no, excuse me. Um, Azamun, Kronky Kong versus Zamunda is going to be our blowout of the yeah. week. I mean, it's going to be mine, obviously. Uh, anybody who doesn't have that as their blowout of the week? I'd have to agree with that. Um, I'm not so sure. Um, I think Dr. Hockey... Over me is the blowout of the week. 
Oh, look at you trying to <laughs> not get the ire of Dr. Hockey. No, I'm just team underperformed last week, and we have even more question marks. I think Dr. Hockey is a blowout of the week over me. All right, interesting. Um, and the upset of the week, where do we go with this? Mm. I, I think I would go with the upset of the week. Who did I? I mean, there was one. Um, game was uh, the Whalers. I think I'd go with the Whalers if the proper adjustments are made. I, I think that the Whalers has a potential for the upset of the week. And I think I'm going to go with him just because of that. Why not? Okay. I'm going to go lightning rods over Nick and Jamie. Okay. What happened in that game? Let's see. Lightning rods over Nick and Jamie. Yeah, that, that's that's really close. I, I agree with that. Okay. Fair enough. All right. All right. We got yep. one in the, one of these games. Uh, we got in the books finally. Good for us. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> Crocky Kong will be happy. He will have his viewing pleasure, as will Eugene and um, and the champ. Although, can he even be? I mean, he's been very pampered. I've noticed uh, ever since he's won. He's he's a different whalers this year. <laughs> yep. So, uh, yeah. And, and it's weird because the man has been a champion of many, many center leagues. I, I feel like this one is was his great white whalers and uh he caught it and he's very happy about it. So um yeah, I don't know. All right. All right, everyone. Best of luck and uh, we'll see you next week. Yep. Until then. All right. Good luck. Yeah.